Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Megan Saunders, and I'm one of the program managers here with the Ensign Challenges Program. Ensign, or the National Security Innovation Network, is a program office within DIU, and we aim to identify solutions to some of the most challenging national security problems faced by the DOD. I just want to remind you that today's session will be recorded and made available for viewing at a later time on the IdeaScale Q&A platform. The link is currently pinned in the chat for your reference. And we can go ahead and get started. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the challenge overview and just some general information that's included in the solicitation. And then I'll turn it over to our mission partner colleague, Vasu Chakravarthi, over at AFRL, and he'll give you some more detailed guidelines into what is posted in the solicitation. Then after that, we'll open it up for Q&A. Before we go ahead and get started, I wanted to give you a brief overview of how we'll utilize the Q&A feature here in Google Meet. So in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you should see an activities button that has shapes in it please navigate to the Q&A forum and ask your questions through there. That way we can track any questions we're unable to answer directly at this time, and we'll get back to you and have those posted again on the Q&A forum within IdeaScale. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. The timeline for this challenge begins in round one. Uh, the solicitation will close in July 8th, and we will have semifinalists announce who will move into round two on July 26th. Round two will then continue on September 5th where the solution development will close and down selection will begin. Then the semifinalists will be announced for round three on September 19th with October 17th having the deliverables due for algorithm testing. We will then have round four commence on November 2nd, and it will conclude on December 13th when evaluations will be completed. The week of December 16th, we will host the hybrid pitch event and we will announce winners. So for round one, we're asking for a white paper submission that meets the following format requirements. Um, maximum five pages with 10 point font and standard one inch margins on letter paper, a cover page, resumes, biographies, references, et cetera, do not count towards the page limit. Applications will be evaluated on three major criteria, technical soundness, creativity and novelty of the solution and clarity. The problem statement is listed on the screen. I'm not going to go over it in too much detail, but in summary, we're here for the RF Spectrum Sharing Challenge AMA, and this challenge is fostered at aimed at fostering innovation in spectrum management. Um, we're looking to identify capabilities in AI and advanced signal processing techniques to enhance spectrum sensing and situational awareness for the United States Air Force and the United States Space Force. And with that, I will turn it over to Vasu Chakravarti for more information. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Ensign, for really making this happen. With that, let me really get into the challenge itself. But before that, I would like to introduce my team. Actually, I'm only a conductor here. The real guys who makes this happen is my uh, Gavi team. Uh, like I have like over 20 plus. I don't think I will identify all of them. They are going to be behind the scenes helping me evaluate. I got guys from Tri-Service Labs and everybody part of that. But the guys who's really designing this challenge and making this happen is my CETA team from Chad Spooner from NWA, Buzz Allen's uh, Braden Dietrich and David Zills, and of course Parsons, uh, uh, Joe Kennedy and Sheriff. These guys are like heart and soul of this whole design. We've been working for more than two years on this now, right? With that, let me, I, I won't take much. I just introduce because most of the time I want to save for Q and A, you know, so I want to give you guys an opportunity. I'm hoping each one of you actually memorize the participation guide 
and have questions for us, okay? <laughs> right? So the spectrum sharing sensing challenge, you know, I just added another word, right? That's what it is. The game is spectrum sharing, right? The challenge is spectrum sensing, right? Detecting, identifying, and uh, characterizing is the name of the game, right? All right. The what I really like to do is spend just a few minutes uh, kind of talking about what this challenge is all about. What's the goal? You know, why the limitations challenges, why we are doing these things. The main goal is uh, to do spur innovation, spur innovation, uh, advancing the cutting edge signal processing algorithms uh, in a kind of the machine learning algorithms and uh, the more the hybrid, the, the convergence of machine learning and uh, signal processing in RF signal space. That's kind of the number one motivation, right? Uh, then uh, the next uh, right behind is, hey, do you want to really identify the best of the best in this thing, right? Once we identify the best of the best, the thing is to transition that to military and commercial applications where these things are needed, right? But the main goal is really, how do you spur the innovation? How do you move these things, you know? Uh, so the, with that, the next question is, why do we really need a challenge like this? You know, uh, why can't we? You know, is it been done before? Yeah, there has been challenges done. DARPA did this, Army did this, but no one has really done a data centric challenge. Army has done data centric, maybe very specific to modulation, but no one has really done this like in a series to drive the innovation. So what our goal is not just to one and done, have a series of these challenges, hopefully a few of them. So where we, work with the community and really get the innovation going, right? That, that's the whole thing. So the main challenge here is uh, in, in this whole machine learning is uh, the data. How do we really create the data, right? A lot of times we are overfitting this data, right? So that's gonna be one of the things. That's why we allocated 45 days of training period. We're gonna work with you, the community and learn how to create this data. That's gonna help us again, uh, designing the uh, a real challenge and everything like that, right? Uh, so this again, like I said, is going well beyond the single modulation recognition army had or the systems uh, system level testing DARPA had. We were very, very data centric and uh, kind of give you guys the data files. You guys will tell us what it is, right? And of course, uh, we modeled the thing in a spectrum sharing. Uh, let me get to the, as I struggle. Okay. So what, what we did was, uh, how do we design this game? We designed this game a spectrum sharing, right? So we adapted this federated wireless uh, diagram you guys see. It's a multi-tier model, you know, the the highest, uh, the, the three tiers, right? High, highest priority usually in this thing is some kind of the military users. The second highest priority is to the guy who paid for the spectrum actually, you know. The last one is the, uh, opportunistic users. We took this model and uh, we kind of designed our game. Again, like I said, we made we made this game up. The spectrum sharing game, the rules is what makes us get very creative and be more future looking challenges, right? I mean, la, la, some people have asked me, hey, how come it's synthetic data is no good, you need real data. I mean, there is pros and cons, right? I mean, the real data doesn't let us get creative and go into the future. So we are doing, we're gonna do a combination of use real data when is we need it, but this whole spectrum sharing game is kind of gives us the creativity to make this more challenging as well as go more into the future looking, right? So if you look at it, we took the same model and we have introduced uh, again, three tiers. One is the urgent users, primary users and secondary users, right? So one of the things we wanna do here in this one is, give you guys all the primary and secondary user signals, you know, the descriptions, what we use in there. Only the urgent user is what we're gonna hold it back, right? So well, all you guys will be doing is telling us, giving us back, what's the ability to transmit? When, when is the best time to transmit? Is the primary user, when can he transmit? Secondary user, so you once you detect, identify and characterize, I think the challenge is going to drive you guys to do that. You will look at the sp spectrum sharing rules and give us the spreadsheet, basically what you saw. Okay. Hey, Basu. Basu. Yeah. It's Chad. Uh, yes. You have a request to um, go full screen or try to show the slides in their entirety in the chat. Is it possible to make that window bigger, taller? I don't know. 
Maybe I'm, yeah. I'm using PDF. I don't, I'm trying to see how yeah. can I make okay. it bigger. Just want to let you know that that happened because you probably didn't notice. Maybe no, I, I'm at the other screen. So maybe at this point, I'm going to stop and uh, maybe open for questions. So Chad, do you have a uh, PowerPoint or something to share, or maybe you? Uh, no, because I'm on, I'm not on the right system for that. Okay. I mean, we can see ninety percent of each slide. I think that the person in the okay. chat just wanted you to try to make it a little bit um, bigger. bigger. All right, po I yeah. post this thing in the chat here. He said. Oh, that's that's. I think that's it right there. You can see it now. Yeah. You, now the whole slide shows. Good. Okay. Maybe when I advance, is where the problem is. Okay. Ah. All right. Why don't we kind of pause now, open up for questions, you guys. You know. And uh, use this slides deck as we need it. So, Basu, in the Q and A, there's all, there's two questions. Okay. Already, do you, do you have that open? Yes. I will. I will repeat the questions aloud so everyone can oh, hear oh, great. it, and Perfect. Yeah. then we can go from there. So, let's start with this first one. Can faculty from multiple universities participate together on one team? I can answer that. The answer is yes. Multiple. Folks from multiple, you know, companies, universities, research organizations can participate together on a team. Next question. Where are the solicitation and proposal instructions for the challenge? Both the solicitation and instructions to submit to the challenge are listed on the Ensign event page, which is on www.ensign.mil. And then also on the idea scale platform there, the solicitation is posted under the about tab in the campaign brief and additional information can also be found in the participant guide as Vasu has mentioned. Next question, can you please expand upon section 25 E the aspect of other users quickly evacuating the channel? Is there a guard time to consider between time slots? So that falls to me, I believe. Hey, Yogi. Um, no, we don't quantify that. The, the idea is uh, you, you don't have to police what the users are doing in the scene we provide you. You just have to, you just have to diagnose it or, or characterize it. In the idea, which we really didn't get to, um, clearly in the slides is that you have to tell us for each time cell in the scene, whether a new PU or a new SU can transmit on that subcell, that time frequency subcell, according to the rules of the sharing problem. So it doesn't really matter if we quantify that, in my opinion, you still have to figure out how long each signal persists, whether or not they are uh, co-channel for a brief time or not. So that's my response to that one. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Chad. Yogi, oh, wonderful. Thank you for that confirmation, Yogi. Next question. There is no information in the challenge guide about propagation channels. Is there any specific information you will give us about this? Yes, we will give you information about the channels at the time um, that they are introduced into a scene that we will provide to participants. But you can um, rest assured that we will be using just simple, um, discrete multipath channels, um, typically with low numbers of rays randomly produced. So, but we will give you more detailed information about that when the time comes. Thank you so much, Chad. Next question. Will the exemplars slash mathematical models of each type of primary and secondary signals with different parameters be provided to participants? Yes. Um, so, hey, Vinny. Um, in the Ensign website, there is a link to what we call the participant guide. And in that participant guide PDF are already the mathematical models for PU and SU signals. 
So you, you could have started on that already if you wanted to generate those signals. Um, we will not be giving you mathematical models or types for urgent users. When we do give you exemplar signals for the PU and SU signals, they will be consistent with the mathematical models in the participant guide. So feel free to ask a follow-up, Vinny, if that wasn't clear. No, thank you. Great, thank you. So we've made it through the initial list of questions, Vasu. I'm not sure if there's a little more you'd like to cover on your end and your slides. Um, so if you would like to dive back into that in the meantime, we can go ahead and do so. Yeah, I, I think, uh, like I said, if there is no questions, uh, Chad, is there anything we think we should, we need to give them at this point? Maybe go into the signals or sharing, but I, I don't want to get into the presentation more and not give them a chance. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I think it seems Im uh, it seems important for us to emphasize the Ensign website uh, because there's a lot of information there that describes the the challenge. And if the people are having trouble finding the right link, you know, in the Ensign website, um, that could explain why, you know, there's there's some confusion. So I don't know. Maybe Megan can can really really show people how to get to those uh, descriptions. There's, a, there's kind of a description in one of the sites and then there's a RPDF that you can click on and get at as well. I agree. I think the participant guide, you guys need to get your hands on to really yeah. understand uh, the challenge. You know, we can go through the whole thing here. It'll take up a majority of the time. If maybe that's what it is, we can do that. But I think the participant guide is in detail kind of gives you guys pretty much uh, you know yeah and so megan is that in the chat the the basic links to get to your site yes they are this is angela um ah. and then on the screen i just wanted to walk everybody through so when you go to the idea scale campaign page this is the screen that you will see and just in this top box right here um, is the participant guide. So you'll find the link there and that's gonna, going to take you to the PDF file that we keep referencing that provides further instructions. But just to give you a little bit of familiarization with the campaign page, this starting here where it says campaign brief, that is the beginning of the solicitation. So, this walks you through an overview, benefits of participating, eligibility, the timeline, why this um, challenge came about, why we're executing it, the problem statement and criteria that you'll be judged upon, and then technical requirements. And so then it goes through the different deliverables that are expected or required for each round. And then further details on IP, the organizations involved, and then some legal language down below. And so it, it is a long solicitation. Um, this challenge has multiple rounds, but I wanna just clear up where you can find everything. So in this top box, again, the participant guide is right down here, but if you wanna go to the Q&A forum, this is where you will find the recording listed post um, about a week following this AMA session. And so if you click on this, it's going to take you to another page. This is where you'll find the recording. And then ideas, this is where you'll post your questions. So if you have a question that doesn't get fielded here that you think of later, or you're watching this video at a later time, this is one place you can go to put in your question and receive a response. And another option is just to use our challenges email at Ensign. It's challenges at ensign.mil, and that's also in the chat. And so hopefully just kind of walking through this has provided a little bit better understanding of where to find everything. Um, and if I go back one more, I just going back to the campaign page that I was first on, ideas is where you will submit your idea. 
in case you're you haven't seen this part yet this is where you'll actually go and fill out the form to provide your submission and with that um Vasu I'll turn it back over to you yep thank you so it looks like Chad maybe people haven't read the participant guide and uh if they don't have questions, what I think is maybe it might be a good idea to go through chart slide six through 10. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that, talk about the signals. You know, I think there was a question what models we give, yeah. maybe the scoring metrics and the kind of, you know, if you want to do that, that would be I'd very be happy to. I'd be happy to do that. We did get two more questions while okay. uh, Angela was talking. Okay. I think in light of time and for switching back and forth sake let's try to work through some of the slides and then we'll okay. go back and try to do a larger portion of q a and just let the questions pile up okay sounds good Perfect. how yeah, about 10 minutes 10 minutes chart you know, maybe 10 minutes you can cover those things give them a little glimpse you know yeah i'll try um <laughs> i might get a little you know excited and long-winded as usual but uh okay so we're on the slide signals types and parameters and this is the high level version of the information that's in the participant guide, which gives you the exact mathematical models of these signals. So for, for the uh, primary users, we have OFDM signals, uh, including uh, captured L LTE, but also simulated um, more uh, generic kind of OFDM. And then several PSKs and QAMs, and we tell you exactly what the rates are and the, what the pulse type is and the roll off and everything you're going to need to know to use a standard communication simulator or write your own to, to create those signals. Um, those signals also have typically um, embedded periodically repeated synchronization sequences, small things like that that make them a little bit more realistic. Uh, for the SUs though, SUs are allowed to use a, a much wider variety of signals, including direct sequence spread spectrum, um, narrowband GMSK and MSK, narrowband uh, 2 and 4 FSK, and then some PSKs and QAMs that are similar to the PUs, but not identical, and then an FH signal that has parameters close to Bluetooth. Then also, since we're, we're uh, including radar as well as communications, we have several kinds of uh, radar signals for the PU and the SU, uh, they're they're mostly basic um, pulse radar signals, but a couple of them are a little bit more complex in that they they can switch their center frequency over time, or they can switch their PRI over time, and so the, the parameters of those signals are also in the participant guide. Um, the idea behind all this was to introduce ambiguity. Um, so that we can spur innovation in our hybrid systems or, or signal processing or machine language systems uh, to handle difficult cases. Uh, so we're, we're taking steps away from the more typical literature type cases where, you know, you have very different modulation types. Um, here we're, we're purposely making things ambiguous in the modulation type if the parameters are different or the parameters are different with the same modulation type. So it will be insufficient for a inference engine to just say BPSK. That will not get you to understanding PU, SU, and UU signals. Okay, um, so I just encourage you to look at the participant guide and study those signals and see what you think. Um, and maybe ask more questions. And also um, sort of uh, elaborating on what Angela, I think was saying, you can go into the Ensign Q&A and ask questions anytime. Um, so that's like a 24 seven kind of thing and we're monitoring that. And so, so I encourage you to use that. Go ahead and, and go to the next slide, Basu. Okay, so we have a couple of choices when we make a, a game like this. We can say all the participants have to give us all of their signal uh, label strings from their inference engines or signal processing algorithms, all of their parameters, that kind of thing. And then we, we would try to analyze 
the accuracy of all of those numbers. Uh, but the other choice we have is to say, well, um, you can keep all of those things to yourself. You just have to tell us on every small time frequency um, cell in some large time frequency plane, whether or not a primary user can transmit on that cell. So that means you have to find all the signals in the scene and track certain aspects of those signals uh, in order to engage with the sharing rules. Then you can say, okay, a primary user, if it wanted to come onto the scene, it would be allowed to transmit here because such and such rules uh, were obeyed. So you end up with, um, instead of a whole collection of parameter estimates, you end up with the binary matrices. And binary matrices have ones and zeros in them. One meaning, if it's a PU matrix, the PU can transmit on that little cell. Zero meaning you can't. You ship those to us. We know nothing about how you got to that matrix. We compare that matrix to the truth, you know, as we see it, of course, since we made the scene. And we can compute a score for that submitted uh, ability to transmit matrix. So you would do that for a PU ability to transmit matrix and an SU ability to transmit matrix. We're also going to give partial credit just for simple occupancy. So you can just try to draw bounding boxes across an entire scene that will get you a, a small score, or you can try to give occupancy matrices for PU, SU, and UU signals separately, and that will get you more, uh, depending on how right you are about that. Um, so that's what you have to submit are these binary matrices that are ability to transmit and spectrum occupancy. And you can see I've shown here a, a rather complicated scene with lots and lots of narrowband signals coming and going. And the different classes all have narrowband signals. So you have to distinguish each one of those little blips in the time frequency plane as being a PU, SU, or UU. Okay, so that's the rather weird way we're doing it but i think it's a it's a really good way in terms of the context of the sharing problem and it's a good way for us to um to give a nice simple score as well okay go ahead and go to the next one okay so i said a lot of this already um we we have basic sharing uh where we look at all of the a to t matrices but then we can also do conditional sharing and say, well, you said you, you know, a primary user could transmit on this cell, but it really can't. That's one kind of error. Or you said it can't, but it really can. That's another kind of error. So we have a, ver a variety of ways of kind of breaking down the, the sharing or ability to transmit um, uh, binary metrics. And we do the same sorts of things with the occupancy. All of that is also in the participant guide, mathematically defined. So I encourage you to take a look at that as well. Go ahead, Basu. I think I'm already over five minutes. And just to give you a, um, a picture of what I'm talking about in terms of ability to transmit for that um, <clears throat> scene I showed with all the little narrow bands flying around the, the rectangles in the middle, uh, we have a surrogate system that we use to process that scene and it came up with ability to transmit for primary and ability to transmit for secondary. And so here we have the truth, ability to transmit matrices along the top row, the surrogate participant submission in the second row, and then the error between those two on the third row. So that error is what you would use to, to form a score. You would want that third uh, row of matrices to be zeros, you know, that the ability to transmit truth would exactly match the participants um, submitted ability to transmit truth. And you can see the surrogate system does pretty well. There's a lot of teal, which is zero there, but there's lots of places where it, it may underestimate or overestimate a bounding box, or it may get uh, a signal wrong and declare it to be urgent when it's really in primary or something like that. So that's the kind of thing that we use to, to score the submissions. Okay, making it concrete. Go ahead, Basu.
Is there another slide? I think there are a few more slides that again this gets into the more scoring. I think yeah. so maybe maybe it might be good to stop and sure. uh, start answering the questions. I think mainly I want you to uh, describe the signal types and kind of what they need to submit. That'll be important, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we did that. Right. Right. Then I think maybe in the end I will probably wrap. You know, depending on what are we looking for in the white paper, I will talk a little bit later on. But uh, I want to see the give time for the questions that came. You know. Sure. It's yeah. I'm at your service. Great. Well, thank you both for the deep dive into the participant guide um, and a bit more information on context here. We'll segue back into the Q and A. So this question is from Yogi. Can you please expand upon the round one supplied data exemplar scene? Will this be made available and are participants expected to include analysis of it in our white paper, part of the evaluation, or is it only intended for deciding if we want to submit a white paper? Yeah, I can uh, answer that. We were initially thinking of giving you guys a sample one second exemplar scene. We haven't posted that. We were not sure if that's too much for you guys you know, in the next few weeks to look at it, handle it. And um, I will leave this up to Ensign to see if we can post anything. But I think we would not require you to analyze that in any particular way. That is correct. For the white, for the white paper. It would yeah, just this be is for, make yeah, it this concrete. is mainly for your own, uh, preview to see, hey, this is what a scene will look like. Because like we said in the very beginning, mo most of the challenge right now is identifying ones and twos modulation. The whole thing about this is identifying a scene is actually the name of the game. And you'll kind of get a sample. What do we mean by that scene? Right. Yeah, we're not expecting, it's for your own benefit. Really? And we don't want to scare people away. That's why we were not sure if it is too much <laughs> and we held it back, you know. And definitely once the training period start, you will see all this. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I just want to add that if we are to release any additional information, it will be available both on the Ensign website and on the IdeaScale platform. And we'll be sure to post a clear announcement alerting you all of such. Next question. Will the deliverables be a simple answer set of matrices or will it be code that is run on a scene? If the latter, are there any processing requirements such as time, GPU usage, et cetera? Hey, Brian, thanks for the question. I hope I answered it mostly already, but certainly we do not want to run anybody's code. So thanks, Chad. Yes, you answered it right after I uh, wrote it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Brian. That's one thing we were trying to avoid, create less work for us from the very beginning. You know, we don't want your code. We don't want to see anything. Okay, next question. Some parameters in the participants guide are not specified. For example, epoch length, sub epoch lengths and channel parameter. One place suggested a one kilohertz channel parameter. Will we get more information on this rough numbers? Will these numbers change throughout the rounds? Hey, Brian, good question. Uh, yes, the numbers will change throughout the rounds. In particular, a, a scene that we uh, post in one of the rounds for you to analyze will come with its own instantiation of the parameters that you see in the sharing rules in the document. So we're we're free to change those per scene. Um, so I think it might be helpful if we moved to the um, the Q and A part of the Ensign site or Idea Scale. I can't get them to keep them straight, but that Q and A thing that they showed earlier, uh, where we can maybe talk about it, um, and I can give you some and everyone else some um, rough ideas of the of the range of those numbers. So in that way, I'll have I'll be able to write them down instead of just saying them here. Is that, is that a reasonable answer? Yes, thank you. Okay. 
The next question is, can you elaborate on the algorithm training? What are the deliverables and how often will we submit? That's for Dasu. Yeah, I don't think we are expecting you guys to the, the whole algorithm training. Um, the 45 days is for your benefit. We'll be working with you. We are thinking we'll give you guys at least two exemplar scenes and uh, one of the things is each machine learning algorithms requires different types of training, different amounts of data. That's why we thought you will be creating the training data. Yeah, you're not required to turn in any algorithms or anything to us. No. You, you'll just be, we'll be going through the whole training period, just like it's a real, getting you ready for, you know, you, when you do the exemplar scenes, we expect you guys to, hey, once you're done, maybe we'll give you data, we'll give you guys a week. Uh, in between, we'll probably have a one day to, really interact with us, ask questions just like this with Chad. Chad will, and Braden probably will be the main guys you'll be interacting with uh, on a regular basis. And you'll be just giving us the time to transmit to see if you guys really understand uh, your training is going well. And also uh, what additional information, you know, we are giving with the simple uh, equations and simple uh, expressions of these primary and secondary users, how much more information you need those are the things, the training period, we are going to figure this out together. Did that answer the question? This was anonymous, so I'm not oh. sure, but I will, <laughs> I will continue to expand on that and just mention that we will be posting additional guidance pertaining to the later rounds of this challenge following the conclusion of round one. So there will be updated information that is provided to you, specifying in more detail what exactly will take place in rounds two through five. Okay, next question. What is the transition plan after this challenge is complete? Will AFRL slash Air Force be purchasing capabilities? Will this get integrated into programs of record? That's a good question. And uh, like I said, one of the things is to really identify the best of the best, right? I think uh, from number of uh, white papers, we can probably move forward up to 15 is what we selected. That's actually a big number, especially looking at the training, but we want to kind of uh, work with as many as possible. And we arrived at the number 15, you know, hopefully there is 15 people who wants to be trained. So once after that, we are going to down select to five. We, I feel these top, these five are the best of the best in uh, cutting edge technology, signal processing or machine learning, really applying to RF signals, I believe. So the top five will actually, the the price is not the, you know, Ensign's price is good, really. It's, uh, the you know, um, pretty good to have that. But the real price is you guys will, the top five will come and, uh, present this thing in front of number of stakeholders, right? Uh, commercial stakeholders like Josh Weavers will be here. The tri-service partners, they're all part of the team. They all will be there. So I think uh, there is not one program of record, depending on, uh, you know, the top five, they all will have an opportunity to kind of go forward is what I believe. But there is no promises here yeah, because no we don't promise. know yeah, because we don't know what you have is good enough or some satisfies somebody, right? But you will definitely be kind of known. People will, I think, uh, I'm hoping things will happen, you know? Yes, from definitely. A, from a affordable perspective, definitely, uh, there will be opportunities to do direct phase two cybers and stuff like that, you know, uh, working with them. So the goal is to transition, yes. Yes, and so as Vasu and Chad have mentioned, there are potential transition pathways in place on the AFRL side. I just want to point out that for the purposes of this challenge, nothing follow on contract related is part of this challenge. However, the challenge does satisfy the competitive process needed to sole source following the conclusion of the challenge. So it is setting you up to do so. And then as Vasu had also mentioned, there is prize money um, that is also associated with it of $125,000. Next question, do you intend to impart cyclostationary feature degrading effects to the signals 
such as Allen variance or deviations from the expected rates consistent with imperfections in real world hardware? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are not really dealing with R of imperfection, so it's all that's why it's data centric is good. I would say that <laughs> if if Vasu's dream comes true and we do this every year for the next coming years, um, we will, but not this time. Great, Michael. Does that answer your question? Were there any follow up questions from that? That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. Thank you, sir. So we've made it through the list so far. I do want to extend the opportunity for folks to raise their hand and ask a question directly if that's a preferred method or continue to drop information into the Q&A feature. Um, while we're waiting, Vasu, Chad, was there anything else that you wanted to touch on regarding the participant guide or any of the additional slides you may have? Um, nothing's coming to mind. Uh, I guess I could ask my own questions like, um, <laughs> what do you guys think? Do, do, does anybody want to offer an opinion about whether or not they think this is hard or easy? Anonymously in the Q&A is fine. I think they will not know until they go to the training. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, I want to tell you guys, uh, uh, the chat and rest of the team, we looked at this, we have a lot of scenes. We actually have eight to 10 scenes already in the pipeline. And we have like a lot of easy scenes. Some of them are thinking easy scenes are hard. So Chad and uh, David and these guys have created a curve. So our goal is not to fail anybody. Our, our goal is to make sure everybody passes. How about that? So what I would like to ask people are thinking questions, I think we are reaching the, you know, we got another 15 minutes. One of the things, I think the very first step is, I don't want to get ourselves ahead of this thing. First is the white paper. I think again, we don't, we, we cannot emphasize enough. Look at the participant guide. It's actually pretty comprehensive. Should help yeah. you guys write the four page white paper, right? So what are, what are we looking for in the four page white paper should be the first goal so that you'll make it to the next step, right? I think, I think there are a couple of things we'll be looking for is uh, in the line of A, hey, is it hard or easy, these questions, right? So we'll be looking for, are these guys really capable of really, do they have the skill sets to participate? Will they even survive the training phase? These are the questions that's kind of white paper helps us, right? So you, we would like you guys to show us your background experience in um, handling these RF signals uh, you know, uh, then advanced signal processing algorithms, your experience with machine learning, you know, right? So that kind of helps us with what you guys have been used to, right? Then also your technical approach, I think a little bit will be nice. You know, hey, this is what I bring to the table. This is what I might use. I mean, you know, whether you use it or not, I think that will be good. And the last thing, I think uh, there was a question on transition, right? This is mainly for the academia guys uh, who come solo. We really encourage teaming. I'm not going to grade anybody on teaming, whether they have or not. But um, I think team will, teaming will become very important as you're moving into the top five, because the best of the best, definitely we want to take you guys in advance, right? So if, if you're an academia, I think, uh, how do you, what is the path to transition? So teaming with small business or even big industry guys, I think we really encourage that to show that. Another important uh, uh, is for people who cannot participate like industry partners who are too big for this. I think they might have an incentive to team up with you guys because whoever is participating will get the data. People who are not part of this thing will not be able to get the data. Yes, thank you, Vasu. And I know that later on, not for the white paper specifically, but in the pitch round, there is um, 
a judging criteria for team itself. And so I do think that that will be important moving forward, as mentioned. I also want to point out there is an opportunity to include biographies in the technical white paper, and that will not count towards the page limit. So please feel free to add team information or biographies um, as you see fit. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, so do you want to uh, re reiterate um, the nature of the people that will actually be um, grading the white paper submissions? That team? Yeah, it's mainly, like I said, I got overwhelming response from the, basically I have assembled the government team, you know, just like any other programs happens. And uh, they mm -hmm. come from all over AFRL. And actually I got guy, guys from other direct friends from AFRL has joined. And uh, we have uh, Navy guys have joined from NRL and other places and uh, we have army. So basically I have guys that, since this is a spectrum sharing, I have people on the Govi team who are radar designers, who are EW, who are comms guys, you know, who are more into the radar signal processing. So we got like our, we also have guys who are really machine learning expertise. So I think we got like a very diverse uh, group of Govies uh, behind the scenes looking at this. So thank you. So there is a lot of interest, is what I realized when I was soliciting for help. Thank you, Vasu and Chad. I just wanna open up the floor one more time to see if there are any questions that folks might prefer to raise their hand and ask, or feel free to drop them in the chat. Just wanna do another call. <clears throat> Not seeing or hearing anything. Um, so I do want to ask Vasu and Chad if there are any final closing remarks that you'd like to impart on the group here today. Yeah, I really, like I said, thank uh, this was actually much better response than I will be because since we almost didn't announce the time and we couldn't decide till the till last week, seeing this response is very encouraging. So I'm going to think more people are going to look at it. And uh, I will ask them to, I expect them to ask in the Q&A forum. I encourage you guys, I know sometimes coming and asking questions in this kind of uh, virtual forum may not be easy, but please mm -hmm. post your questions in the Q&A &Q forum. Uh, there's a good chance we may not answer instantly at that hour, but we will answer that in 24 hours. Yes, thank you. And we found as well that a lot of these questions other participants have as well. So. The Q&A forum is definitely a very great feature to help everyone get their questions answered um, and also review responses to others' questions as well. Thank you all so much for your time and being here today. We look forward to reviewing your proposals and I just wanna reiterate that this session will be posted the recording link on the Q&A forum as well in the campaign brief section. So that should be posted within the week um, and feel free to continue to ask questions there. Um, you know, once you review the participant guide, had you not had the chance to do so prior to today's session. Thank you all for your time and we look forward to working with you all. Thank you so much.